free uh, second student's tea, and we may have something um, special for the person uh, that, that, that invited you and brought you um, as well. Um, but I just want to set the tone before um, we get started reading God's Word and, and diving into what He has for us tonight. So we ask all the time. That, hey, once we begin this, once we begin worship, once we begin anything when it comes to giving praise to God, worshiping God with everything that we have, we ask that you guys stay seated where you are. Um, We think that you can hold the the little potty break for a little bit, okay? Stay where you are. Do not go to the bathroom. Um, We ask that if you're on your phone, um, you use that as the Bible app. Um, We don't, uh, we ask that you guys not be a distraction to the person next to you because I'm going to tell you. I don't have anything to say tonight, but God may be speaking to some of you in here tonight. And if you're being a distraction to somebody around you, I do not want them to miss out. So please engage in what God has for you tonight. If you can do that, can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah! Uh, I need you to turn to your neighbor and, and ask them this question, who do you follow? Turn to your other neighbor and say, who do you follow? Now I'm going to tell you, I'm not a social media expert by any means. Uh, In fact, many of you would say that I would probably be pretty lame or you would make fun of me because I am honestly not engaged in social media um, very much at all. Uh, But I looked up uh, the famous uh, TikTokers that are out there and I know that you guys can probably give me the top five that are out there without looking at your phones. I'm going to need your help in this. Number five, can I get a guess? Who? Charlie is not number five. Who's number five? Huh? Nobody said it yet. Number no. I see some of you are getting your phones out looking. You're not supposed to be looking. No, Jake Paul's a loser. Number number five is going to be Will Smith with 72 million followers. I, that's what Google says. You can look up Google. You can look at the top ones. What it says. Number four. Give me a guess. Who's it going to be? Addison. You cheating, Urban? You looked at your phone. Uh, who told you? Who told you? You just, you just know. You just know. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Number four is Addison Ray with 88.2 million followers. Number three. Number three. Who's it going to be? Number three. Bella. There you go. Bella Port's 90.6 million followers. Number two is who? Huh? Cobby? Number two, it was a tight race. Number two is Charlie with 143.7 million followers. And number one, Cobby Lame with 100, listen to this number, 146.2 million followers. So listen up, everybody listening. Good, 146.2 million followers. These people have captivated millions of followers by the dances they put on TikTok, the things they say, the things that that they post. They have captivated millions of people. It's absolutely crazy. When we think of Cobby Lane, 146, 147 million. When we look at the United States, there are like 350 million people. He has the audience of half the population of the United States. How many of you uh, follow all of these people? Can I get a, a show of hands? Raise your hand if you follow. If you follow at least two of them, show me your hands. None of y'all follow them? I guess I'm lame in this. <laughs> We're going to continue on in that question. All right, everybody listen up. If you're listening, say yes. I want to ask you a question. It's going to seem weird right now, but it will make sense here in a little bit after we work through this. The question is this. What kind of Jesus do you follow? It's weird, right? You probably never thought about it that way. What kind of Jesus do you follow? When I ask that question, there may be some different thoughts or some different images that pop in your head. Um, I'm going to show a few pictures up here. We have the the long, flowing-haired Jesus right there. Many of you may have seen that picture, and that may be some of how uh, may, that may be some uh, of you that imagine him that way. We have a uh, kid Jesus. We have the the. This was on the portrait of many Bibles back in the day. It's um, uh, the, the Jesus surrounding himself with kids. Um, if you're not childlike, you cannot enter into the heaven, um, to, to, to the Holy of Heavens. Uh, we have um, baby sheep Jesus, lamb Jesus. 
You see that many times? Oh, go back to the baby sheep Jesus. We went a little bit quick there. The lamb, baby sheep Jesus. We see him either holding it or draped over his shoulders all the time. We have cross Jesus. Maybe some of you recognize Jesus through what he did for us and how he died for our sins on the cross. Many of you wear necklaces um, but with that. Or maybe uh, you think of Jesus as uh, wearing the crown of, of thorns um, that he wears. Um, that the brutal um, uh, attack that they put on Jesus when they put the crown of thorns on him to make fun of him, to, to ridicule him. Or some of you may see Jesus as this, buff Jesus. <laughs> buff Jesus. We, we see, we see, uh, we see buff Jesus who may have this incredible opportunity to be a social media influencer. But if you were to do a, a Google search of Jesus, an image search of Jesus, you would find many different versions of what Jesus may have looked like or how people perceive him. So another question, what characteristics of Jesus come to mind when you think of him? Some of you may characterize him as a, a loving Jesus, which he is. Somebody who is very quiet, somebody who always compliments everybody, somebody who would never hurt a fly. Others see you, others see him as maybe an extrovert Jesus. Um, he's always the life of the party, always talking to people that he shouldn't be talking to and speaking to people constantly. Others may see him as an introvert Jesus. Um, we see that Jesus regularly got away from people and he went to be by himself to pray. You see, everyone in this room has a different version of Jesus in your mind. So back to the question, what kind of Jesus do you follow? If we are to represent Jesus as Christ followers on this earth, then we need to have an ultimate understanding of who Jesus is, not this made up Jesus that we have in our heads or who or how others perceive him or how we perceive him. We need to understand Jesus ultimately to be a follower that we need to be. We need to understand that Jesus is real and Jesus is alive. If you're like me, you have probably questioned who Jesus is as well and you would think um, that his disciples the ones that were closest to him, the ones that followed him constantly, you would think that they knew exactly who Jesus is, the version of Jesus that they see, they would see that and believe that and follow that. We're going to start off in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 15, where we see a different um, experience in that, that the disciples and the people around were a bit confused at who exactly Jesus was. Let's read it. It says, now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? So obviously we can see that there is some confusion here with the people, with the disciples, and them um, seeing Jesus for who he is. He asked the question and the disciples say, hey, some of the people are saying that you're John the Baptist. Some of them are saying that, that you're Elijah or, or maybe one of the prophets. They were listing off all these different versions of who Jesus might be. So why does this matter? It's a great question. I'm going to tell you this. Write this down. The way we follow Jesus will be affected by who he is to us. I'm going to explain that. I'm going to tell you again, the way we follow Jesus will be affected by who he is to us. Meaning, if we follow Jesus, that is just another spiritual figure in our lives, just something that, that we have perceived Jesus to be, nothing that's alive, nothing that's a well, nothing that's in us. If we just perceive him as a spiritual figure, then it's easy to live a life filled with insignificant goals. And if we follow the wrong versions of Jesus, we will always miss the point in life. But if we can understand who Jesus really is and what it's like to live like him, then we can really begin to follow Jesus and have an influence on people around us. And when we follow Jesus, we discover God's best for each and every one of us. We see in this story um, that Peter begins to catch on a little bit and, and, and we see the reply 
that Peter has to Jesus. Again, Jesus asks the question. He says, who do you say that I am? Verse 16 says, Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven has revealed this to you. So Peter right here, he declared that Jesus, that Jesus was the Son of God. He says, you are the Messiah, the one that will restore us back to a relationship with God, the one and only Son of God that is here to rescue us from our sins, to die on the cross for each and every one of us. Jesus declares himself As God, Jesus revealed that knowing this truth would be the foundation for the rest of Peter's life. And he wants to reveal the same to you tonight. Knowing who Jesus is and following in his steps is that important. It is the foundation for the rest of your life. Tonight, I want to tell you one of the key components. One of the key components in following Jesus is to understand his love for us. Everyone say love. It is very crucial that you understand Jesus' love for each and every one of you. If you do not understand his love, you will never be able to follow him in the way that Jesus has made us to. Do you understand me in that? Everybody say love. Love. I think there are many times and many people that don't understand how to follow Jesus for the simple fact that we don't understand how Jesus loves us. I'm not talking about like a McDonald's, a quarter pounder cheeseburger that sounds really good right now, but I'm talking about this thing called agape love. Everybody say agape. Agape Agape love. Agape love is unconditional love. It is sacrificial love. It is the love that Jesus showed us when he laid down his life and he died on the cross for our sins. It's a love that loved you first. A love that didn't wait for you to get it right. A love that didn't wait for you to meet him halfway, for me to meet him halfway. A hundred percent, he came to us when we had nothing to contribute. You see, his love isn't based upon how you feel about him, how you view him, how you act, the words that you say. His love is based upon how he views us, how he sees us, each and every one of us, as children of God. God. First John chapter 4 verse 9 through 10 says this. In, in, in this the love of God was made manifest among us. That means to be made known among us. That God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. He says in this is love. Not that we have loved God but that he loved us and sent his son To be the propitiation for our sins. I know that's a big word that simply means sacrifice. Saying that God sent his son to be the sacrifice for our sins. You see, before we were born, Jesus loved us. In our worst moments that we have, Jesus loves us. When the world is against him, he is for them and he loves them. When we disobey him, he still loves us. Following Jesus is all about how we understand his love for us. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with one of the most quoted uh, pieces of scripture in the Bible. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. That means everybody. God loved everybody. And he gave his only son, Jesus Christ. He says that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Life. You see, this type of love is everlasting. And Jesus shares that love with each and every one of us so that if we choose that love, we can spend eternity with the Father in heaven. And He wants us to live in a way that when others follow us, they will see this love of Jesus that lives in us. That's exactly what Jesus tells us to do in Scripture. John chapter 13, verse 34 through 35, it says this, A new commandment I give to you. It says that you love one another just as I have loved you. It says you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. See, for you to be an influencer, for you to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you must love others. And I know how difficult that can be, trust me. 
with all the people that were turning their back on Jesus, with the ones who were wanting to arrest Jesus and have him crucified, Jesus said, hey, I still love you. And he gave up his life for each and every one of them. That is true love. And as we wrap up my portion for tonight, I want to give you three quick things that the love of Jesus does in our lives. First one is this. Love identifies us. Let me tell you, if the love of Jesus identifies us, then the world will know Jesus by the way that we follow him. I'm going to tell you that again. If the love of Jesus identifies us, then the world will know Jesus by the way we follow him. When we love sacrificially and unconditionally on others, then I'm going to tell you the world encounters Jesus. The second one is this. Love transforms us. Love transforms us. We go from death to life. We go from old to new. Understanding Jesus' love for us transforms the way that we live life. To know that he deeply loves us on a level that we can't comprehend, on a level that we don't even know about. That is transforming love. The third one is this. Love will cost us. Love costs Jesus his life. Loving people first. When we do this, our selfish desires go out the window and what was once important to us is now not important anymore. Love will cost us. We have to say no to ourselves and yes to Jesus daily. You see, love will cost us temporarily, but what we gain through that is eternity by loving Jesus. See, this world will know who Jesus is based on the way that you follow him. Where you walk, people will walk, not because you're awesome, even though you are, but because of how you follow Jesus and how he loves you. You see, we must make a choice each and every day to love others and to follow Jesus because of how he loved us and sacrificed his life for us. So I want you to think about that question one more time. What kind of Jesus do you follow? Is it one that is a flawed view of how you perceive Jesus to be? Or is it the real Jesus that laid down his life for each and every one of you? It makes a, di- it makes a big difference on how you follow Jesus. If you see Jesus as not real or alive, then I'm going to tell you in your life, I'm going to tell you nobody's going to be able to tell that you're following Jesus. But if you see Jesus as alive and well. And a Jesus that loves each and every one of you intentionally, personally, relationally. Then you're going to see that how you follow Jesus looks much different. There may be many of you in here tonight that maybe struggle with that, like me. I struggle with that all the time. But tonight I want you to know that, hey, tonight is the night where you begin to, to change that around to see Jesus for who he is, to see that Jesus laid down his life for each and every one of you. That is a love that we cannot comprehend. But I pray that you would pour your lives into that and begin to follow Jesus in that very way. I'm just going to ask that you guys bow your heads and close your eyes real quick. What kind of Jesus do you follow? I would say that many of us in here would say that, that, yeah, Mitch, I follow Jesus. <coughs> Maybe I've struggled with that here lately. I would love to be able to pray for you. Um, if you would, um, if you're bold enough to do that, I'm just going to ask that you slip up your hand. We have leaders around that, that want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. You say, Mitch, right now I'm struggling with following Jesus like I, like I need to. If you would, just slip up your hand right now. Let me see. Anybody in here? I see. Anybody else? I see you. There may be some of you in here tonight. You may not follow Jesus at all. And I want to give you the opportunity to begin to follow Jesus tonight for the very first time. You say, Mitch, how do I do that? It's a great question. You believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. You believe that he lived a perfect life. Do you believe that he died on the cross for the sins that we commit every day? Do you believe that when he died, he went to the tomb, and three days later, he came up out of that tomb, conquering death, 
defeating sin and living for eternity. That is the hope that we that is the hope that we have. To know that Jesus is alive and well and he lives for eternity. So tonight, if that's you, if you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, to say, Jesus, will you come into my heart? I'm just going to say this prayer. And if that's you, I just want you to say this prayer to yourself. Say, God, I'm a sinner. I mess up each and every day. And I know that my sin separates me from God. And right now, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. God, I turn to Jesus and begin to follow him. God, I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. With every head bowed, with every eye closed, I just want to know if there's anybody in here that would be bold enough, just on the count of three here in just a second, to slip up your hand and say, Mitch, I made that decision tonight to begin to follow Jesus for the first time. On the count of three, if that's you, I would just love for you to raise your hand. One, two, three. If that's you, raise your hand. I see you back there. I see you. Anybody else in here tonight? And say, Mitch, I just, just started following Jesus for the first time. Anybody in here? Be bold enough to raise up your hand just so I can see you for a second. Make sure I see you. I see you. Say, so God, we thank you so much, God, for who you are. God, for what you've done for us. God, I pray for these students, God, that they would know the love that you have for them. And God, through that, God, that they would follow you with everything that they have. God, as we continue to worship tonight, God, I pray that your name would be lifted high above every name. God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said,